Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Lyle and I'm the lead trainer at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this interactive video, we're going to take raw depths to water table station data from the HGA demo project and transform it into a time series plot of water table elevation. This video will give you good exposure in building advanced queries in HGA as well as with creating plots. As I've already mentioned, this tutorial uses the demo project so that you can follow along yourself. In order to install the demo project, if you haven't already, simply select Install Demo Project. You can install it wherever you want, but I'm just going to install it to the local database and simply hit Next and Finish and wait for it to install. Once it's done installing, you'll be presented with the station list. Before I dive off and start creating the query, I just wanted to take a second to review the data. So if I select the Station Data tab, I can see that I can switch in between stations just by selecting the station off the station picker. If I change the data category to uh, monitoring event, I can see that I can uh, take a look at the different water levels for the different stations present in this project. Uh, most of the stations in this project have data from 1996. A couple of them have data from later, and some of them have this depth to water level that's just two meters with this comment initial water levels. This is kind of dummy data uh, that we don't necessarily want in our query. If we go back to the station list, we can see that most of our stations present in the project have a top of casing, but a couple of them are soil borings and don't have a TOC measurement. Uh, this will be important later because when we calculate the water level, we're going to subtract the depth to water level from the top of casing, so we'll need to exclude any station that doesn't have a TOC present. Now that we've reviewed the data, let's build the query. Open the Query Builder by pressing this icon in the toolbar. Create a new query by pressing the New Query button in the top left. In this window, we'll leave the query type as a general query, and we'll change the query name to 1996 Water Levels. And we'll save it under the Water Levels folder in the Queries node. Before I start building the query, let's take a second and think about what we want on it. Remember that we want to create a time series plot of water table elevation in 1996. So we want the query to display the station name, the depth to water level sample date, the water table elevation, which we'll calculate by subtracting the depth to water table from the station's TOC. Additionally, in the conditions field, we want to filter out any results from stations that don't have TOC data or water level depth data, and we'll restrict the results to 1996. Let's start with the display fields. We already have the station name added by default as a display field, so we don't need to add that ourselves, but we also want the top of casing, which we can find under the description node, location, and TOC. I simply double click to add it to the display fields. We also want our water level data, so we'll go to monitoring event, water level, and we want the date, so I'll select date, and we also want the depth to the water level, so I'll double click that as well. To calculate the water table elevation, we'll want to subtract this depth to water level from the TOC, and this can actually be done directly in the HGA Query Builder. So I'll select the expression for this, hit the copy hotkey, control C, select the expression for the TOC, put in a minus sign, and paste in this expression here, and I'll change the alias to water table elevation. Now I can just delete this depth to water level display field, and our display fields are now good to go. Now let's look at filtering the data with conditions. For the source condition, I can choose the entire project, or I can choose a certain station group, sample set, or database. Uh, oftentimes this is useful, but actually as it happens for this, I want to select the entire project, but just be aware that when you're creating your own queries that this option exists. Next, I want to make sure that there's TOC data, which I'll accomplish by grabbing the TOC field off of the location table, which I already have open, onto the conditions pane, and I'll just say that I want this to be greater than zero, and I'll select an AND. I want to make sure that the uh, depth to water level also exists. So I'll also accomplish this just by grabbing the depth to water level field off of the water level monitoring event table and just saying that I want it to be greater than zero. Finally, I want to limit this to results in, from 1996. So for the date, 
I'll say that I want the date to be less than 1997. As it happens, I know that there's no results from before 1996, so this will actually work just fine. Before I forget, I want to specify that the results of this query should be in alphabetical order by station name with the secondary ordering by the ascending date. So I'll select ascending for order by for station name and station date. And this query is actually now ready to go. I'll execute it by pressing the execute query button. And as you can see, we got exactly what we wanted. We have this table of station names with water table elevations and dates. Now let's turn these query results into a plot. We'll do that by creating a new plot collection by pressing the button here on the toolbar. And we'll add a time series plot to this plot collection by pressing the green plus button and selecting time series. For the source, we want to select query. And we'll select the query that we just generated. So this is under water levels, if you recall. We named it 1996 water levels. For the series, this determines how the different data will be connected uh, with lines. So we want to connect them according to the station. So I'll select station name for the series. And for the symbols, I'll select station name as well. On the x-axis, I'll put the date parameter. And on the y-axis, put the water table elevation. And now when I hit OK, we can see that our plot gets generated exactly as we wanted it to be. One thing to notice on this plot is that we seem to have a bunch of outliers here that don't have any time series data throughout the year and seem to be uh, generally higher than the uh, rest of the results here that do have time series data throughout the year. These results are the placeholder data that I mentioned at the start of the video. All of these have a depth to water level of two meters. If possible, we'd like to be able to remove them from our data. And in fact, we can actually do this dynamically. If we go to the station data tab again, and we take a look at a station that has the dummy water level data, we can see that all of them actually have a comment that reads initial WL, and we can filter out the data uh, based on that comment. So if we go back to the query builder, and we select conditions, and add the comment from the water level table, and we make this operator the is not operator, and select a value of initial WL. And additionally for this date, we'll put an AND operator. Now, when I execute this, we'll get a slightly different result. And if I go to the plot collection and select refresh, we can see that all of our bad data has been filtered out. So that's all I have for you. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you learned something.